Armed Forces spokesperson Restituto Padilla says the military supports extending martial law in Mindanao. This comes after the Philippine National Police recommended prolonging martial law in the region to President Rodrigo Duterte. Padilla says the AFP wants to address security threats persisting in Mindanao after the Marawi siege. Padilla adds he does not know the length of time recommended by the AFP for martial law extension. The PNP proposed a one-year extension in Mindanao. However, Padilla says the military also wants the extended martial law confined to Mindanao. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III creates a task force that will review the now-suspended Dengue vaccination program. Last week, French pharmaceutical giant Sanofi Pasteur announced its vaccine may lead to more severe cases of Dengue for individuals who had not been infected by the virus prior to immunization. Duque already suspended the Dengue vaccination program on December 1, but not before the DOH was able to give the risky vaccine to more than 700,000 Filipino grade schoolers in the National Capital Region, Central Luzon, and Calabarzon. Another 15,000 police officers, their relatives, and walk-in civilians also received the vaccine from an immunization program in Quezon City. Duque says he will demand that Sanofi refund the 3.5 billion pesos the Philippine government paid for the Dengvaxia vaccine. Duque also confirms a 12-year-old female from Tarlac who received the Dengvaxia Dengue vaccine was later infected with a severe case of the virus. The DOH chief says the female student's symptoms included hypotension, low blood pressure of about 64 over 40, and a platelet count of 24,000. He says the normal count is around 250,000 to 450,000. Duque says the child has already recovered from the illness. The DOH is still waiting for more details regarding another case in Cebu. The DOH will also be hiring 30 additional surveillance officers to be deployed in the regions where the vaccination program was conducted. DOH plans to closely monitor the vaccinated children for five years. Duque adds PhilHealth is ready to cover up to 16,000 pesos worth of medical expenses of any child who will be hospitalized for severe dengue. Jover Laurio, the woman behind Pinoy Ako blog, sues self-proclaimed political and social commentator Franco Mabanta for four counts of libel. Laurio, in a complaint filed Friday, is suing Mabanta for his Facebook posts made in October, where he made fun of her appearance. In various posts, Mabanta referred to Laurio as an ogre lady who is profoundly disgusting and hideous. He also accused her of playing the victim card and being funded by yellows, referring to the Liberal Party. According to Laurio's complaint, the first three counts of libel were committed by Mabanta when he reposted his attacks against her person via three Facebook posts, while the fourth count was committed when he claimed that the Liberal Party paid for my interview in ANC and that I was tasked to bring up the victim card during the said interview. Laurio says she received attacks and messages in her Facebook account, similar to Mabanta's, disparaging her appearance. Lario is seeking compensation for moral damages amounting to no less than 500,000 pesos for each incident. In a blog post also on Friday, Lario says the complaint is the start of a series of three cases she will be filing. She says she is filing a separate complaint against RJ Nieto, also known as Thinking Pinoy, and Sa Sasot for accusing her of committing libel against various personalities. Laurio adds the two maliciously and with ill intent exposed her as the author of Pinoy Ako Blog. Mabanta, along with bloggers Nieto and Sasot, are supporters of President Rodrigo Duterte. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque says the Philippines will reassess his commitment to the International Criminal Court if it violates the principle of complementarity enshrined in its founding treaty. Roque was speaking in front of state parties to the ICC in New York Thursday. Roque, as representative of the Philippines, reminds the Assembly the ICC is meant to complement national efforts in criminal justice and not have primary jurisdiction in the prosecution of persons accused of crimes against humanity. He says that primary jurisdiction rests in the country's own justice system. Roque says the ICC should be a court of last resort, with its jurisdiction activated only when the state is unwilling or unable to investigate and prosecute such crimes. In April, Filipino lawyer Jude Sabio filed a complaint against President Rodrigo Duterte before the ICC for alleged mass murder. Sabio cited the murder of at least 1,400 people by the alleged Davao Death Squad when Duterte was Davao City Mayor. He also mentioned the killing of at least 7,000 people in the Philippines under Duterte's war on drugs. Sabio is the lawyer of the self-confessed hitman Edgar Matobato. 
Matobato accused Duterte of being the mastermind behind the vigilante killings in Davao City when he was mayor. Roque gives assurances the Philippines is prepared to act, as we have always so acted, to bring to bear our national criminal justice system upon those who violate our laws and pose a threat to our national security. He adds he is confident the ICC will respect national processes. A Wall Street Journal report says Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is the actual buyer of a Leonardo da Vinci painting that sold for a record-breaking $450 million at an auction last month. Salman supposedly used an intermediary to buy Salvatore Mundi. The painting, one of fewer than 20 works generally accepted as da Vinci's, was earlier reported to have been bought by little-known Prince Bader bin Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Farhan Al Saud. But the Wall Street Journal says Bader was only the nominal buyer and United States intelligence reports identify Salman as the true owner. The son of Saudi King Salman is seen to be progressively consolidating his power and is the architect of a wide-ranging plan dubbed Vision 2030 to bring social and economic change to his country's oil-dependent economy. He is also seen as the mastermind of last month's rounding up of more than 200 princes, ministers, and businessmen in a sweeping anti-corruption purge. Mm-hmm.